All right, so this is a workflow in order to take a silhouette and turn it into a 3D object in Blender. Okay, so first off, you're going to need Illustrator and Blender. Then we'll look for a silhouette. So go to Google, search for silhouettes, go to Images. And then I'm just going to drop down these search tools to choose only black and white. Okay. Another thing I'm going to look for is size, larger than, maybe 2 megapixels. Pulls up some qu more quality stuff. Then I need something that doesn't have a whole lot of like detail as far as that concerned, like these real fine lines in here. Not, not such a good pick. You can use them, but I wouldn't suggest it if you're going to actually print it. Mm -hmm. So, let's see what we got here. Got a bat. That's not too bad. It's pretty neat. All right, I see a gift for my daughter. Well, we'll choose this. Okay, so let's take this view image. Right click on it, copy. Then let's go over to Illustrator. File, new. Okay, does it matter the size of this? and edit paste it. I'll zoom out using alt and wheel mouse. Alright, I feel that this is rather big and black. What the heck? Let's see what we got here. Right click, save image as. I'll save it on my desktop. And then I'll just place it here. Now usually I don't like placing anything in Illustrator, but in this exception I'm just going to end up live tracing it anyway. There we go. There's this weird pony thing. And now holding shift. I can scale this down by touching the corner. Alright, next, go in here, and I'm going to hit, hit Image Trace. Now in CS5, this is called Live Trace. So just hit Image Trace if it's CS6, Live Trace if it's CS5. Okay, so now what we have is vector curves. We'll expand these. There we go. There's actually two sets of curves here. One's for black and one's for white. We're going to have to separate those. What you do is click here, then click on the object. Go object, ungroup. Again, click here, click back on the object, object, ungroup. If you can't ungroup it anymore, you did a good job. So you now should be able to grab this white area and hit delete. So you have to get rid of all the white area. In order to see if you have it all, just go view, show transparency grid. There we go. All right, now. If you want to see the lines, go to View Outline. This is the line that we need for, for Blender to become polygons. Okay. Let's go back to Preview and save this out. Let's go Save As. SVG. Weird pony thing. And hit OK. 
All right, let's jump over to Blender. Now for Blender, I'm using a special keyboard shortcut. Um, been using Blender for quite some time. I always use these keyboard shortcuts because it's uh, one of those things that they're really good for Maya. Uh, if you want this keyboard shortcut, all you do is have to uh, look below on the video and you know, I'll provide a link for it. Let's try that one more time. It works in all versions of Blender, by the way. So just click here, user preferences. So I'm going to import the key configuration and it's located on my Dropbox. But again, I'll provide a link to this file. It's a P PY file. called Welsh Keyboard and I use the Maya presets with Welsh Keyboard. I'll just save that user configuration and close it out. Alright, navigation real quick. Alt, um, left mouse, middle mouse, and right mouse allows you to navigate. Alt, left mouse, middle mouse, right mouse. X on the keyboard gets rid of this. I would get rid of everything in the scene. Then import SVG. It actually is in Blender. It's really small. So what you do, click and drag hit period on the number pad. There it is. Let's go object, transform, origin to geometry. This will take and put the pivot point right in the center of this object. This object is a vector curve. We need to convert it over to polygons. So we do this. Go object, convert to and you notice it doesn't have it lit up this is often the case you click here then click back on with the left mouse button and there it is okay now let's get rid of the material because the material being black I can't show you the wireframe let's go over here and I can just touch this move it over Go to the globe and destroy the material. There we go. Now what I could do is when I hit tab, I can tab over a wireframe and you can see that it's all polygons. So tab. And you can switch between, you know, you can see object mode and edit mode down here when you hit tab. All right, let's go to face. Click on one face and then hit L on the keyboard. Okay. Just kind of um, go to a side view. You can see I'm in user perspective. If you hit five on the number pad, things get a little easier to navigate. So five on the number pad is user ortho. With all the polygons selected, you can hit Control E, then right click on the mouse. You'll get this blue arrow, and I can now pull this up. Click anywhere. Now, what you have is polygons with thickness or an extrude. All right, so this little pony thing is uh, very small. If you end on the keyboard, you can see that it's 0.1 of a millimeter. Okay. Well, in order for it to become a good 3D print, I'm just going to have to get, get it a little bit bigger, maybe like about 50 millimeters. So I go to scale. 
I'm in object mode. The white circle right here is uniform scale. So click the white circle and drag. All right, so I dragged it until I got about 50 millimeters in any one dimension. That makes about a good, good width or height for a keychain. Now the thickness of this is a little thick. I'm just going to switch that down to four millimeters. And now I need some way to put a hole here. All right, that's very easy. Here's object mode. I'm going to add mesh cylinder. Hit W on the keyboard. Right now this cylinder is two millimeters by two millimeters by two. I'm going to make this three millimeters by three millimeters by 40. And then you can think of this as a drill bit. Okay, so where are we going to put the drill bit? I, I would say I'm going to look for something that is not the weak point. If I put it in the tail, this tail is a little bit thinner right here. So we're going to put it right here. And then um, just kind of line it up so it doesn't, maybe it looks like it's part of it. There we go. Yeah. That was seven on the keyboard, by the way, to jump into the top view like that. Seven on the number pad keyboard. Okay, now that I got the pony, go like this. Wrench, add modifier, Boolean, difference, and choose cylinder. Now, initially, you're supposed to put a hole in the character. But if the character is, um, it needs repaired, it will do this. Very easy fix. Click on the character. Hit tab. Hit L. Go over here to flip direction. This flips all the normals in the right direction. And when you hit tab again, you'll see that there is kind of a slight orange going on right here. If you hit apply to the boolean, click on the object and move it, you'll find a hole there. Booleans are super powerful, but they are they yield bad geometry in 3D print doesn't matter though. And that, what I mean by bad geometry is I mean like it, it produces all these wacky triangles and yeah. But so does the whole overall object have all these weird triangles. And it's really high poly. Again, all it needs is a good outer surface. And then the 3D print slice technology picks it up. All right, the next part is just exporting as a still. So export, still. I'm gonna run through the entire workflow uh, for my students in a the, in the class. So some of the software might not be uh, what you're used to seeing. Consider this is just for a select group of students. So There is a program called NetFab. It's located in a folder on your desktop called 3D Print. I'm on a PC, but it's the same exact software. It's the freeware version, so you have to wait 15 minutes or 15 seconds to actually run it so later. Right click, add part. I'm going to add pony. Click on pony, turn it green, 
go up here and go to the plus repair then automatic repair and then apply repair then right click export part still put it right over the top of it essentially this process takes all the bad polygons out of the equation and allows a better print okay then in a fo uh, folder on your desktop it labeled 3D printing software. There's also a program called Slicer. Okay, in Slicer you just go File, Load Configuration. In Load Configuration there's a called Spider-Man. Okay, this is for the 3D printers in our class. It's basically the initialization of those printers. The settings of Okay, hit delete all. If you have anything in there, let's go add desktop pony. There it is. All right, you can go over to export G code and export pony. Because sometimes these are higher polygon meshes, they take a little longer to export. All right, so there we go. We now have G code for a 3D printer to print the pony all made from illustrator lines and an image from the internet. So, enjoy.